Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to what I guess is going to be official guide. Hi. Here's the thing, YouTube. Fischl is a little bit of an abomination in terms of how strong she is right now. Fischl was already a very, very strong unit, and the release of Dendro kind of made her, like, even better. Basically, all of the Dendro archetypes that want an Electro unit kind of want to use Fischl. So we'll get into, into that when we get to, like, team archetypes and shit. But point being, Fischl's meta relevance is higher than ever. And so I figured I should make a video about her because I know that there's not too many resources on Fischl right now. So let's uh, let's take a look at her, at her her stuff, right? Normal attacks, suck, don't use them. Oz, or Knight Rider, her skill. Summons Oz, the Knight Raven, blah, blah, blah. Summon a Burb, and the Burb attacks enemies. Pretty cool. Her burst is she transforms into Oz, and then it summons the Burb again, right? So if I let the Burb expire, I use my burst, transform into Oz, and then I leave it behind. I can also recast E at any time to change the position of Oz, but that's not something you do all that often because while he's like in his summoning animation, Oz can't really attack, which means that you actually kind of lose hits from Oz when you when you move him. So unless you have to, I wouldn't recommend doing it. She has a passive that doesn't really do much, which is when you shoot Oz with a charge shot, it deals damage in AoE, but not enough damage to justify it. But if you just look at this, you're like, okay, Fischl's pretty good. But what really makes her like very good is this. So her Ascension 4 passive is that whenever your current active character triggers an Electro-related elemental reaction, you deal Electro damage. So when you attack an enemy that has Electro on them with Anima, it's gonna swirl and it's gonna do one Electro damage, or one instance of Electro damage, not one. Right? 6305. But if you have Oz on the field, we get a second instance of Electro damage that is from the Ascension 4 triggering, which effectively basically lets you maintain Electro on an enemy a lot more easily when you're doing reactions. But that's not where it's broken, because obviously this is really good. This means that you can very reliably maintain Electro on enemies when you want to. All you have to do is trigger reactions with your active character. It's like it doesn't work if you trigger an Electro reaction with a non-active character. But what makes this really like go over the edge in terms of how good it is and what changed in 3.0 is with the addition of the aggravate reaction. So we do the same thing. But this time it's doing 14k instead of 4k because Visuals Ascension 4 doesn't have an ICD on elemental application. It's always going to apply Electro, which means that it is always going to trigger Aggravate. Now, if you don't quite understand what Aggravate does, I would highly encourage you guys go watch my elemental reaction guides. I made it in three parts. If you don't have a like no understanding of it whatsoever, you haven't played the game in a while or you're new, you can check out the first video. And if you already have a decent understanding, but you're, you feel like you're missing a few parts, you can watch the third video that's focused on in-depth Dendro reactions. So, this aggravate interaction is incredibly strong. It does a pretty high amount of damage and it does damage based on how fast you can trigger aggravate or swirl or crystallize or superconduct. Any electro reaction that isn't going to remove the quicken from the enemy. So overload is going to remove quicken and hydro is also going to remove quicken. So stay away from pyro and hydro characters in general as your on fielders to trigger Fischl's Ascension 4. Basically, right, the, the, the main ones are the animo and the electro characters. Now, part of what makes this so good is the fact that there's a lot of characters that can apply Electro really quickly. So if I look at uh, Kutsing, for example, right? So now we don't have VV on our team because I feel like if I have VV, I'm just gonna fucking kill him too fast. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove all of my stuff from Kutsing so that you can really tell very easily what part is Fischl's damage because Kutsing isn't gonna be doing any. So. And as you can see, right, we still end up doing a pretty large amount of damage, literally just from Fischl's Ascension 4. This doesn't include, doesn't include Oz damage itself because we cast Oz too far away from the enemy for Oz to do anything, right? So it's literally just Ascension 4. It's also not Kutsing damage because we removed our, all of our artifacts from Kutsing. Effectively, right? You get a lot of damage just from Fischl's Ascension 4. Now, I'm gonna show how that actually performs in practice by putting an actual set on my Kutsing and using a real team. 
Uh, this is an, ele an electro resistant one, unfortunately. A little bit unlucky, but it is what it is, right? It is what it is. It is, it is what it is. I am a little bit dumb. But yeah, so we still get like pretty solid DPS. It's nothing like crazy insane fast, but it's not bad. Keep in mind that was an electro resistant Vishap, and this is a Katsing team, right? That was like actually on field Katsing. And when you actually remember that, you're like, okay, yeah, you know what? Yeah, that's actually kind of kind of impressive. For context, I can basically like barely one rotate this guy with my with my Hu Tao. Well, that was effectively a one rotation. It was a very like sustained and not front loaded rotation, and it's a longer rotation, but one rotation nonetheless. Anyways, the the, the point here isn't that wow, this Katsing team is power creep and it's better than everything else. Woohoo! No, the, the point is Fizzle is so good <laughs> that she makes even Katsing teams look good. <laughs> but the thing is, in this case specifically, there is actually a reason. To run Katsing over other units. You look at how often Katsing applies Electro. She applies it four times on her burst, right? One on this, two on this, one on this. She applies it two times per E, so with Thundering Fury, you apply it even faster. And she applies it with her infused Electro attacks every once in a while, too. So you end up getting like a lot of Electro application, which is basically kind of just more than what other Electro carries can do, which means she triggers more aggravates. Now, just looking at her damage by itself, that's like, okay, but she's still, like, even with the aggravate, she still doesn't do as much damage as if you were, for example, aggravating Raiden instead. But triggering aggravate more often isn't just, well, now I deal more aggravate damage. It is also, I'm triggering an, an electro-related reaction while on the field. And that means more facial damage. A lot more facial damage. Effectively, you're getting value from your facial. The reason I wanted to cover this, like, specifically, the, the Katsin case, is because it's very important with facial how often your on-field carry character triggers electro related elemental reactions because it is gonna like significantly change her damage but that's in quicken teams obviously Fischl was a good unit before 3.0 she was a great unit before 3.0 and what that means is well yeah these teams are really good but what about what about the non dendro teams what about the, the teams that don't use quicken so for those teams you would effectively run Fischl in teams where you wanted an, an off-field electro almost every time i know that the irrational team Team comp is very popular but when it comes to single target situations which is where this team is best Raiden's not much better than Fischl in this team she's good but I wouldn't call her much better than Fischl so you, you could definitely use Fischl in this team other than that what other teams want electro well mostly before 3.0 we had some physical teams with Ella, but i would say that's not where she really shines that well but before 3.0 i would say that the team that where she shined the most was variations of taser teams because in taser teams you want fast electro application so you keep getting electro charges but you also just want electro units that do a lot of fucking damage and fischl is definitely good at that so you have a lot of variations of taser teams personally i really like the Beto version. It is not all that insane in single target though, and we don't really have good AOE testing grounds right now, but I can still show you guys a very basic example of how it works. Yeah. Basically, this is a good team that, I mean, it's, it's always been really, really strong. The biggest reason why it's good is because it doesn't really have a situation where it's bad. Like, this is single target and it's weaker in single target than it is in AoE, but you're still running Fischl and Sing so who are mainly single target oriented. But also you're running Beto and Sucrose, who are very AoE oriented. As you can see, these enemies kind of just get shredded a little bit. 
and so do these. Point being, Fidgetal was already a good unit before 3.0, and I don't want you to watch this video and be like, okay, if I want to use Fidgetal, I have to use it with Dendro. God, no. She's a more important part of Dendro teams, but there's a lot of non-Dendro teams that still want to use Fischl, and where Fischl is still the best option. The reason why she is that good is because she has really good damage output with really low field time, right? You have to swap her once into her once every 10 seconds or 12 seconds if you have C6, but also she has good energy generation and doesn't really require a battery. So effectively, you get good damage, good particle generation for basically no cost other than, than a team slot because you just have to go into her every 12 seconds, which isn't difficult, and you don't have to build your team around getting her enough energy, unlike you do with a lot of the other units that deal good off-field damage like Shang Li. So, with that out of the way, let's get back to the Dendro teams, because there's one thing that I think is relatively important to understand about the Dendro team, which is that depending on which Dendro team you end up playing, your official build is going to be different. So, when it comes to Taser teams, to Overvape teams, to any, any teams that isn't Dendro, where you use Fischl, you kind of just ignore Elemental Mastery, because whenever you trigger an Electro-related Elemental Reaction, she reapplies Electro with her Ascension 4. She's very, very rarely going to be the trigger for reactions. Most of the time, she's going to be Aura. When it comes to Electro Charge stuff, no unit is really trigger enough to justify really building Elemental Mastery. It's not a bad stat, but it's not better than Attack per second. So as a general rule, pre-Dendro, the stats you're going to be looking for are going to be Attack, Electro, Crit. And the sets you're going to be looking for kind of depend. You have a few options. You can obviously go 2-piece Thundering Fury, 2-piece Attack set. I like 4-piece Thundering Fury because usually when you swap into her, you'll trigger an Electro Reaction, which means that Thundering Fury effectively makes your E cooldown go from 25 to like 24 three because one's on your e one's on your burst which allows for slightly shorter rotations which can be nice but realistically it's not something i'd recommend to anyone who isn't like min maxing their rotations as a general rule when it comes to non-dendro teams i would basically just recommend either sticking to two piece two piece you can get away with thunder soother if you're playing a taser team or you can actually use a four piece tenacity set now the reason why the tenacity set is pretty good is because she doesn't really have a set that's that good on her you run two piece two piece most of the time which means that you don't lose that much from going tenacity especially if you refresh your e after casting it and you actually get the tenacity buff on herself then the gap between tenacity and two piece two piece is very very minimal but also you gain the tenacity buff on the rest of your team which can be pretty valuable when it comes to aggravate teams though that won't necessarily be the case the way that aggravate works is it scales with your em so the more em you have the more of your damage your aggravate will do and because you can trigger aggravate as many times as you want as long as you still have quicken on the enemy then the fact that Fischl reapplies electro doesn't prevent her from triggering it it actually does the opposite it helps her trigger it more and so because of that what ends up happening is you have a pretty large portion of your damage coming from oz and the ascension for like talent scaling itself but you also have a pretty high portion of your damage coming from the aggravates and because the scaling on this is relatively low but it always triggers aggravates then the more often you trigger Fischl's Ascension 4, the more EM is valuable when compared to attack. That being said, both of them are always significantly worse than crit and damage percent because crit and damage percent scale both your talent and your EM damage. And so what ends up happening is you basically just figure out what set you want to go for, which is generally going to be four piece Thunder Soother as like the highest damage option, but with a condition or four piece Thundering Fury, because now the aggravate damage being increased by 20% actually is nice it's still not insane but it is valuable and with one or two second cooldown reduction you get per rotation because this doesn't proc when you're off field the tf effect it only procs when you're on the field you don't get like that much but you do still get a little bit which is valuable but yeah so you can go for thundering fury you can go for 
Thunder Suitor, you can go for two piece, two piece still, or you can also go for the new Gilded Dream set. The Gilded Dream set gives you EM and attack, which aren't as good as damage percent, but it gives you a lot of EM and attack, which is enough to kind of make up for it. And you still want to go damage and crit on your Goblet and Circlet, but for your sense, it actually changes. So the basic TLDR is both EM and attack are good, and just go for whatever best substats you have. So I actually, I used the optimizer earlier to figure out what my best official set was. And if you go take a look at it, the first option it gives me is this attack sense, this one. But if I scroll down a little bit to the first set that doesn't use that sense, the next best one uses an EM main stat sense. It uses this one. Basically, they're kind of just interchangeable. Just go for whichever one has the best substats. When it comes to weapons, most of the five star weapons that have crit are okay. Stringless is very good. Elegy is okay. Alley Hunter, that's an okay option. Slingshot can work. But basically, right, if you have a stringless, generally that's what you use. If you have a five star weapon other than Amos Bow, it might be better than stringless. If you don't have a stringless, then go for whatever you want. Slingshot being like the baseline option, but Alley Hunter, if you have it, is good. Blacklift Warbow when you get stacks on it is good. Viridescent Hunt is good. But yeah. So that's it for the, the Quicken teams. But the Quicken teams aren't the only Dendro teams that you can have. You also have another Dendro team option, which is Hyper Bloom. In Hyper Bloom teams, though, stuff is a little bit more complicated because what ends up happening is you've got Hyper Bloom that scales only with EM and then your Talon that scales with attack, damage, and crit. And depending on how often she triggers Hyper Bloom, you might just want to go full EM on her or no EM at all. Because if she doesn't trigger Hyper Bloom at all, in Hyper Bloom teams, it's generally going to be, or at least the ones where you get a, like, a significant amount of Hyper Bloom, you don't actually get a lot of quick enough time which means that if you're not triggering hyperloom and you're you don't have a lot of quick enough time em is actually just completely useless so depending on what kind of hyperloom teams you go for you can either go basically no em or basically full em on official specifically i don't like going full em because the way that oz can target seeds will very very often mean that the seeds just don't get targeted at all and a lot of your seeds are just going to stay on the ground and then end up triggering bloom or the rupture thing whatever right when the bloom scenes expire after five seconds so personally when it comes to hyper bloom teams i really like playing fischl with a unit that can hit the seeds very easily so you can either do something like off field fully m raiden or cookie or you can use an animal unit and swirl electro that Oz is applying to the main enemy and that electro swirl can trigger hyper bloom so the team that i've enjoyed the most since the patch is this team which is basically a Hyper Bloom Sucrose team. Effectively, right? You, you might have been seeing those like, I don't know if they were 20 something K or 30 K. I was getting hyper blooms. And well, as you can see, my official doesn't have that much EM. So that like those big hyper bloom numbers were actually coming from sucrose triggering hyper bloom, not official. Effectively, because official isn't triggering hyper bloom and because you don't have quick enough time, she doesn't like EM at all. Against the Primo Geovis hap, official triggers a bit more hyper blooms than usual because of its rare hitbox. But in AoE situations, the more enemies you fight, the less she will trigger. Right, this this sands that's like incredibly goaded for quick and stuff. Well, this 54 EM is wasted when it comes to a team like that, so it would actually be better if I was using a sense like this one. Anyways, point being, as a general rule in Hyper Bloom, you don't really want to build Fischl with EM because she doesn't get enough ownership on the Hyper Bloom reactions themselves. She will trigger a few of them, but not enough to really justify building full EM because of the way that her targeting works. I guess we can show this team in Abyss now. Ooh, good RNG, let's go.
But yeah, uh, as closing thoughts on Fischl. You know, I, I used to consider Fischl arguably like the sixth best unit in the game. Now with Dendro, I don't know. I think she, she went up. I don't know up to where. She's really good. She's an important, the arguably the most important part of so many Dendro teams. There's so many Dendro teams that just don't work well without her. I don't know. I'm 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 happy because Fischl's a unit that was given for free. Her constellations are good, but they're not ne they're far from necessary. She's still very very good at C0. She was given for free last patch, so a lot of people have her. It's it's nice. I would encourage you to try teams like these. Uh, they're really fun and they're really good. As usual, thank you for watching YouTube. I'm still in the process of figuring out Dendro stuff. My videos on pre-release Dendro. I would say I was mostly accurate. I think that there's still a few things I want to keep testing to get a better idea for them. So if you want to see that, you can feel free to check me out at twitch.tv slash thejeff77. Link in the description. Like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next video. Bye, YouTube.